Chemo Man here. Now, I thought I'd take a little bit of time out of my day and show you how to take off the, uh, the rotors on this uh, 1990 Dodge Power Ram. Now, if you're like me, you don't like to read a lot of manuals and you don't like to buy a lot of special tools. So I'm going to show you how to do it with a couple of things that you can make around the, uh, around the house. So the first thing you got to do is remove this little dust cap. Now, I don't really like to subscribe to that can't hit metal things with rubber hammer thing, so I like to use a nice big framing hammer. Really, really makes things a lot easier. And uh, you know what, if there's something on your truck that you can actually hurt by hitting yourself, you bought a piece of shit. So go out and buy yourself a new truck. So you remove this dust cap. Sometimes and it's been sitting in the field for a couple of years, but you usually pops right off. And then inside there, you got a little snip jibber, and you got one of these things. Thankfully, my wife bought me one of these for my birthday, so that was really nice. So you get in there and you remove your snap ring. And she comes right out. And it's a little bit rusty in here. I'd like to show you, but uh, if I move the camera, I'll probably not be able to get it back where it was. But anyways, after that, you get in here and you remove your four-wheel drive gear and just set that right aside. Now that was all pretty easy up to this part, but now you got to get this special little factory tool. You know, and I just locked and I just dropped you. But I'll take this opportunity to show you what I mean. So inside of here, you got this weird looking finger. Now you got to get her out. So I'm going to show you what you can do to make your life a little bit easier. These things should be torqued to about 60 uh, foot pounds. But what we can do, use them nice big chunk of steel that we found lying around the property. What we can do is fashion up a nice end that's got some points on it. Just got to chop her up. Now, once you shove that in there, get her lined up. Give her a couple of love taps with the hammer. Just to make sure it's in there. Then you just shove an old tent pole through that and give her a little twist and then Bob's your uncle. Now you're thinking to yourself, geez, that was too easy. And you're right. Now, behind this thing, there's another little doodad. Now you see how nicely that came out? And the great thing about using your tent pole is you just shove her in the end there, give her a couple of little taps, right up for you. Now, inside of here, there's this little tiny thing, and I'll show you when I can get it out. But there's no real good way to get this out, so what you do is you go into your field and you get yourself a piece, couple of pieces of barbed wire. Then you fashion crude hooks out of the end. Once you've done that, you can kind of feel around, feel around, until you find something that feels like it should, should should fit in there, like right there. And then you do the same thing on your other side. Feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it, feel it. And then you just got to give her a couple of real good love tugs. Now, when I last left you, I was going to get some hooks and take this out, but unfortunately the barbed wire snapped on me. Thankfully it wasn't the good stuff. I would never use the good stuff. But uh, what I did instead was I fashioned uh, 
a little hook out of this nail that I found in the driveway. So what I'm going to do is take my handy dandy framing hammer and we're going to lock this little puppy around the little finger that's in there and I'll show you the thing in a second when I can get it out. But you just lock her in there because there's a couple of little things. And then you just get your hammer set up and you just give her a couple of taps to get her started. Yeah. And you just give her a good tag. And that, I think, should do her. Just got to get her. Oh, yeah, there we are. Okay. Now this is this little locker do doodad. And uh, you can see that uh, it's not really a whole heck of a lot to grab onto when you're getting it out. So if it's really suctioned in there, just get yourself a nail and a hammer, and you can get that out. Now, we're almost done. This uh, little, little unit here has uh, two locks that uh, hold the hub in place. So it might be kind of confusing for a minute until you realize what happened. So same thing as before. We're going to get this thing in here. It even fit that time, but let's give her a little smack just for good measure. Ten pull. Feed her through. And with a couple of little twist. Oh, that was nice. That didn't even require anything. Which probably tells me I have to uh, change out some parts. That was far too loose. Like I said earlier, 60 foot pounds is recommended. Oh, it looks like you've fallen over. Well, darn it. Must have been too much power in that. In my torque. So, anyway, you just unscrew this. It takes a little bit longer. And she comes out. I can just feed it the rest of the way on the splines with my fingers, thankfully. Otherwise, I'm just going to remove it from the end of your fashion bar. And then, you get stuck. You've still got your little nail. Whoop. Just like that. And you can see this thing's got a bit of a, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a little bit of a tit on it. And that's where it fits into that other snip jib. But then, once you're all said and done, she just pops off like nothing. And then it's a quick thing to remove the bearings in there. And then drop you again. Well, that's all I have for you. And we're down to the splines there. I'll be removing this to do the U-joint, but uh, the rest of the process is not very interesting. Thank you for watching.